What's up, my name is Technobo here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another Rust server tutorial video. In this series, I'll be showing you how to set up and run a successful Rust server using Server Pro's VPS service. The first thing you want to do is head across to the My Servers page on your Server Pro dashboard. Navigate across to the control panel for your VPS server. If you want to learn how to create a new VPS server or you're not entirely sure what one is, click the I in the top right hand corner of this video or check the description down below. That'll take you to a video on how to get started. Then on the left hand side, head across to Create Service. From the drop down under Servers, select Rust. Now we've already run through all of these settings in the vanilla setup guide, so I'm only going to touch on them lightly here. Most of everything is very self explanatory. Choose a version up here under version, scroll down and set up your server configuration here. Make sure that Web Archon is enabled and of course for the purposes of this video, make sure that UMod is also enabled as this will be how we load mods into our server. UMod is simply a modification for the game that allows hot loading of plugins. We'll go through what a plugin is later, how to install one, configure one and how to use one. I'll leave most of everything here as is. You'd only need to change these up here if you're going to be running more than one Rust server on a single VPS. Otherwise, everything's fine. Scroll down to the bottom and click install. Now your vanilla Rust server will begin to download with UMod enabled in it. Your server is now installing. All you have to do is wait for the Rust tab at the very top to change from yellow to green. Then you can click on it and head across to the Shell tab where you can monitor the progress of the installation. If you'd like more details on setting up and configuring a vanilla Rust server, make sure to click the I in the top right hand corner of this video or check the description down below for a link to another video that explains that in incredible detail. Let's assume that you already have a functioning vanilla server on Server Pro. All we have to do to enable modding capability on our server is simply head across to the Rust Server section of our Server Pro VPS dashboard. Then scroll down until you see Enable UMod. Simply just click Yes and then ask your server to restart. By doing this, it'll download and install UMod. Simply heading back to the Shell section of our Rust service, we can see when the server successfully boots up. While the server is starting up, let's see exactly how we get plugins downloaded to upload to our server later. Simply head across to umod.org or click the link in the description down below. At the very top, click Plugins and then select Rust from the list of games up here. From here, you'll be able to download and install any of these plugins. But to keep it nice and simple, I'll be using a very basic plugin just to show you how to install a plugin and use the basic config. For this video, I'll be showing you how to install the authentication plugin. Basically, players must use slash auth space a password to be able to play on the server, otherwise they'll simply be kicked. It's super simple and has very little config. So when you find a plugin you'd like, simply click download in the top right hand corner and you'll download a .cs file. What do we need to do with this? Well, simply head across to your server pro dashboard, into your VPS and then into the Rust service. Head across to the files tab on the left hand side, open up the new oxide folder, Open the Plugins folder and inside of here, click the Upload button. Then select Files and simply choose the file that we just downloaded. Then click Open and then Upload. Now the file will be uploaded and it's available on our server. Assuming your server is already running, it should be hot loaded, meaning it should automatically be available. Let's head back a folder and then into the Config section. Inside of here, if the plugin has loaded successfully or simply has a config with it, you'll see a .json file with all of the plugin settings inside of it. Opening up authentication.json, we have all of the settings available for this plugin. I'll simply be changing the default password here and give players 30 seconds to enter it before they get kicked. I'll then click Save File to save changes that we've made. Let's go ahead and reload this plugin so that reloads the config as well. Head across to the dashboard of your Rust service on your Server Pro VPS. Make sure that Enable Web Archon is set to Yes. Then copy the Archon password and we'll be navigating across to our server's Web Archon. Simply look at your server's hostname up here or click it to see the IP address as well. We'll be heading across to either of these, colon, 8080, in a web browser of your choice. So I'll head across to technotest.mcpro.io, colon, 8080, as that's my host name. I'll paste in my password and click connect. Now we see our server's dashboard over here. I'll head across to the console section so we can input commands. From here, we can run a couple of commands. Oxide.reload space star will reload all plugins on the server or we can simply choose one by typing in the name. In this case, I'll be typing in authentication. 
After hitting enter, you can see the plugin is unloaded and then immediately loaded once again. Cool, so now that we've downloaded, installed and configured a plugin, let's go ahead and connect to the server to see if it's working properly. From here, you can either locate your server on the Rust server list if it's been running for a while and it's showing up. Otherwise, you can hit F1 and then type in connect space followed by the hostname or IP address of your server colon 28015 or whatever the server port is that you defined while setting up your server. Default is 28015. Upon joining, you can see that the auth plugin is asking for a password. After entering it, we won't be kicked after 30 seconds of gameplay. The plugin is working as expected. If we refer to the plugin's umod page, we see a full list of commands and usually they're pretty well documented as they have to be. We can use slash auth password to show the current password. Let's go ahead and run that in game, slash auth password. As you can see, even though we're server operator and we have all of the permissions that we can, we don't get anything back in chat. Why? While some commands you can only run through the server's console, especially ones like this to set or view something sensitive, like a password. Let's head back to the server's web archon. Then we'll type auth space password. And after hitting enter, we should get a response like this. We also have auth toggle status timeout help retries. So auth toggle disables or re-enables authentication. Auth help shows help for the plugin and the other commands. Let's go ahead and change the password. Auth password space test one, two, three. After hitting enter, you'll see that the new password is now test123. For a lot of plugins, you don't need to run any extra commands for it to save. We can check by visiting the file section of our Rust service, oxide, config, and then opening up authentication.json, we'll see our changes here. Password test123. Sometimes plugins don't save automatically by themselves, or you change settings that you need to save manually. To do this, we can simply run server.writecfg. After hitting enter, you'll see config saved. Now that we have plugins installed, running and configured on our server, there's a couple of other basic oxide commands, such as oxide.unload, followed by a name, will simply unload a plugin. We can also use oxide.load, followed by a name, to load it back once again. We can check currently loaded plugins with oxide.plugins. Now, of course, Oxide has a built-in, fully functional permissions and group system. This way, we can limit access to certain plugins by their permissions. Checking a plugin's UMOD page, you'll usually see a permissions section with permissions that can be granted. So, of course, I didn't have permission to edit or view the password in-game because we don't have this command over here. Let's see what groups there are. I'll simply run Oxide.show. Now we can see all of the available groups and players in said groups. Group, admin, players include my Steam ID over here, unnamed. Why is that? Well, it's because we gave ourselves admin before we actually installed Oxide. From here, we can use Oxide.grant followed by a group or user, name or ID, and a permission to allow someone or a group access. Let's go ahead and run Oxide.grant space followed by group followed by a name of said group or username if you chose user, so in my case, admin, space, followed by a permission. The permission in question is authentication.edit. After hitting enter, this permission will now be granted to said group. Running oxide.show space group space admin will show us permissions for the admin group. I'm included in the group and now we have authentication.edit. So heading back into our game, I'll run slash auth password. After hitting enter, now we see a password returned to us in chat because now we have the ability to actually show and change said password because we gave ourselves the permission. Now, most plugins will have permissions, but some of them allow all players to use them by default, such as typing in slash auth followed by a password to actually play on the server. Just before we end off this video, I'll show you how to create and add users to a custom user group or an existing user group. Let's go ahead and create a new group. Oxide.group space add space followed by a name. I'll call it VIP. After hitting enter, we've now created our VIP group. We can simply remove it with oxide.group space remove space followed by the name, but I'll leave it here. Let's go ahead and add a permission here. Oxide.grant group VIP authentication.edit. After granting the permission, we suddenly decide that we don't want VIPs to have the ability to change the password. So simply hitting up to get back to here, we can change grant to revoke. 
After hitting enter, we've now revoked the permission from the group. All right, so now that we've created a group and given it some permissions, let's add some players. Oxide dot user group space add space followed by a player's partial name or Steam ID. I'll just say Tyler as that's the first part of my in-game name. Space followed by a group name, VIP. After hitting enter, we can see that we're now part of the VIP group. Now let's say that I don't want myself to be part of the admin group anymore. I'll say Oxide dot user group space remove space followed by a player's name or Steam ID space followed by a group. I'll simply remove myself from the admin group. Now if I use Oxide.show user Tyler, you can see that we're currently part of default and VIP. Permissions, none. So if I tab back into my game and run slash auth password, you'll see nothing back in chat. Now here's where the system gets a little bit confusing. You can set parent groups of other groups. What does that mean? Well, once a group is parented to another group, they will simply share permissions one way. So let's simply parent VIP to admin. What does that mean? Well, VIP will get access to all of the commands and permissions that the admin group has access to. So oxide.grant parent followed by a group's name and then a parent group's name. In this case, VIP and admin. Now you can see group of VIP parent has changed to admin. Now if we run oxide.show space user Tyler, you'll see our permissions. No permissions currently granted, but we're part of the VIP group. Tapping back into our game slash auth password. Now you can see a password is returned to us in chat. Why is that? Well, not because VIP has the permission, but because VIP's parent admin has the permission inside of it. And that's basically the crash course to permissions and user groups inside of Oxide. In this tutorial, you've learned how to install and configure a plugin, load and unload it, as well as reload it, assign permissions to groups or users, and manage groups. Hopefully this video has helped you somewhat and you're now able to set up and run your own Rust server. If you have any video suggestions, leave them in the comments below. If you're having issues with anything, contact our support team. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.